um, and well connected in globalization, as Clinton Hutton uh, uh, said, that yes, the big corporations have no borders. They go to any country, they uh, transform things, they disrupt societies. And so we are supposed to live within borders, but corporations live outside borders. These guys have no flag. So as an artist, I'm saying I can also not, not that I'm rejecting my identity or my nationalism, but you cannot live in this global situation where Greece or Liberia is burning and you pretend that it doesn't uh, belong to you or it's not part of your world. We live in this world, so we have to be connected to what's going on. Or it's going to, it's going to come back to affect you at some point in the future. As I was talking to students in Greece, I said, OK, there are Africans on the street. You know why they're here? You're, you're hating on them, not particularly you, but Greeks. And saying, you know, there are crisis of water, crisis of poverty, other things. They're running from this place because of something. Do you understand? Have you ever tried to reach out and help? Here's a way to help, and I'll get to how we did that. Uh, I'd like to do something here. Uh, excuse me a minute. My, my presentation doesn't seem to be working right. I'll just be start. Okay, so one of the initiatives that I part participated in uh, in 2010, as everybody can remember, the uh, Haiti uh, earthquake, uh, the devastating earthquake which killed over 100,000 people. I mean, it's my problem. And I'm sitting at home watching television, like, what can I do? You know, I can't fly down there. I have no technical skills, medical skills to help anybody. So I started making posters. And we, we, we have seen all the images of, of the destruction and so forth. So this is one of the first posters that I made. And I posted it on Flickr and I attached with this poster information to Doctors Without Borders. Wherever there was organizations who were trying to help on the ground, I, I linked and then people were actually going there and, uh, and giving money and also responding, also pointing to other places as well where you could uh, connect to what uh, was going on here. And this was the second one. <laughs> and followed by all these. And so while, while I made these, I, I found out that a group of artists uh, and designers in California had made a call out to artists around the world to submit posters. Uh, that would, they would use to raise money uh, for Doctors Without Borders. And so I printed three of the posters and shipped them to California. And they got hundreds of posters. And they held an auction. And they raised thousands of dollars uh, for Doctors Without Borders. And those three posters, the one in the green, and I am Haiti, and the blue one, uh, Fetch five hundred dollars each, so now they're valued that kind. But uh, I, I don't sell these posters. Any organization wanted to use them for for some kind of effort, and people approach me from time to time. You know, Michael, can we do? This? Can we use this uh, magazine or a book, or an article? Um, so I said, of course, you can, you can have them. And and so the, the Haiti poster. Uh, project you know, the collaboration of artists and designers from around the world, you know, benefiting the victims of the earthquake. And, and here is um, uh, Dr. Without Borders, kind of with my name also kind of coming to them. I like what they, they do because they're, they're from all over the world, mostly from France, but they, they do a lot of work. And, uh, one of the next initiatives that I have uh, now started, and it centers around the crisis of water. And this project that I'm working on came out of my visit to Greece. 
And while in Greece, I, I was there to actually um, present the Reggae Poster Contest 100 Best Posters. I was invited by Acto uh, School of Design there to show the posters. Uh, that was in uh, last year after we did the Jamaican one in November. We have, I went straight to Greece and presented this. I was also invited again to, to return to Thessaloniki, and Thessaloniki is in the north of Greece, yeah, it's close to Turkey. And um, one of the things that we do when we present these posters, we also try to have talk on social design, how you can use posters or any kind of creative energy for positive change. And so we had a workshop and the, the, the topic we decided was uh, um, post, uh, poster design to help society awareness on a particular subject. And so we decided to, um, okay, so one of the things the numbers, when we start looking at the numbers with the students there, you know, these crazy numbers turn out like 3.4 uh, million died here from water-related diseases, you know, so that's, that's big numbers there. And it's not lack of water, it's lack of clean water. In Africa, part of the uh, preservation, luckily Jamaica is an abundance of water. I mean, Folks sometimes complain about they don't get sufficient water or water commission, whatever. But in places like Liberia, where this infrastructure is totally crumbled, destroyed because of civil war and poverty and all the other things, women and children are walking, you know, five miles just to go get some dirty water, and that take and they take that home, makes them very ill, and, uh, and so that's crazy, crazy numbers. And here's another crazy number again, you know. Okay, and this is the one that hits people a lot, you know, because every 21 seconds a child died from water-related uh, illness. You know, this is the kind of water people get up in places like Liberia and other parts of Africa, and Asia, and even Latin America as well. This is what they drink. So can imagine, you, can, you get ill all the time, the kids can't go to school, and uh, there's a serious problem in development for that community. And now you find out why people are escaping, trying to go to Europe sometimes. You know? It comes out of this kind of effort. So Face Africa is one of those um, organizations that reached out to me because I'd already made posters on, on this. And so I've been helping them uh, with their functions and fundraising by providing uh, my designs. And it takes about $2,000 to build a well for a village. And this is transforming once, once they drill one of these wells and they, uh, the community can maintain this and run it and kids don't have to walk five miles. So that's amazing. So this is one of the first posters that I created on that uh, subject. And this was picked up. Sulator Carolyn Cooper found me for the book. Um, Sarah Carver Jones, who lives in Boston and runs this organization, reached out to me and um, she's used this as part of her fundraising campaign. And, and this is another one, Peace, Love, and Clean Drinks and Water. And uh, these were made for bags and t shirts and the like. And here's another one which I made recently. It's trying to capture the imagery uh, of those I must tell you, the kind of posters that I created is not just some, they're informational posters, but I want to see, uh, I would like people to also put them on their walls, you know, like, it's fine art, that's the way I look at it, and so, I want to make them beautiful, I want to make them very interesting and contemporary, uh, it's kind of an outside the box way to look at things, and so I want the, the audience to take a second look at the art and then get the message, or they'll pick it up on the first. So this is uh, Thessaloniki, uh, and this is where the workshop was held. And, and so we came up, in the workshop, we came up with the idea of design for water. And so we created a web page, and we had two days of uh, workshop. We talking about, you know, uh, uh, bringing the awareness to the students. Many of them don't have no idea that this exists. 
and so they were so uh, impressed by it, one, and, and found out, wow, you know, you can't, you have to do something. They felt they have to do something. And so we started working on the concept for design, and, and um, we shared some of my work. I said, okay, um, I'm going back to the U.S., and Maria, my partner, my company, Staffield, who also was instrumental in setting this up, um, we, began, we left Thessaloniki, we don't know where we'll see these kids again, and we said, okay, hit us on Facebook, uh, send us your posters, we'll put them up, and uh, in a couple of weeks, we started to receive posters, and, and just, these are just some of the uh, shots from uh, the workshop, and that's Maria. Uh, it's me, uh, it's like a one at one at the end, the end of the session. So we are working on concepts. Some people collaborated on posters, others uh, did. And so they were very, very interested in, in really doing They started out the first thing kind of skeptical, and now we're going to do this. And then once they saw the figures and the imagery and, and the figures that we showed, they were convinced that now they had to do something. And this is one of the posters that came out of that. Uh, that project, and it, it's an amazing one because it, it, this designer is really thinking outside the box uh, in terms of uh, the message, why clean water is such a dangerous thing. It kills uh, so many people. Uh, yes. And, and here's another one, and another one. And this one, sort of like a wanted poster in, in, in a very interesting design, very clean, very elegant. And, and, and those are others that uh, we're still getting more. And at this point, this project has now extended beyond the group because on Facebook, other people and other designers want to participate. And so we have now broadened this whole thing from just a group of maybe 20, uh, 30 uh, designers in Thessaloniki, you know, an entire community being built around it. And uh, I mean, there's another interesting one, which is very powerful, I think, uh, just using water droplets to create the, the imagery. And for the first time, these students are really looking, you know, because if you understand Greece and its history, they're very, they look internally a lot, similar to like Jamaica, they're like very nationalistic uh, in their concept. So outside, it doesn't really pay much attention, they don't pay much attention to it. But here we got them to really uh, begin to understand that you cannot kind of find yourself on your, on your own borders. We're all connected, so this is one way to reach out. And here's an example of a community in Liberia that is uh, building a well. And this is, this is what the well looks like. It's like a standpipe in the middle of a village. But it's very basic, and it's hand-pumped and hand-driven, and the water is clean. Many times you see clean water for the first time. And so we are going to use all these posters that we got from this to build one of these. And so we're now going to face Africa and we'll be part of this. So this is just an example of how social design can, uh, how designers can participate in the global conversation of how we can help. And then, uh, the Arab Spring. So we all know what took place, you know, with revolution spreading from Tunisia to Egypt and uh, Bahrain, and, uh, now Syria. And uh, for me, that was a very exciting time. This is one of the, uh, the original concept of the posters. Get up, stand up, and I wanted to link that with the Bon uh, powerful. So the one in the middle is. is was done for the Tahrir Square. And those uh, uh, shapes and imagery is a, is a representation of the tent city that built around, that developed around Tahrir Square, which is a circle. And so uh, I, I thought this was a powerful one, like the rise of the sun and energy, you know? And, and this, is, this is the last stand for the revolution. The, uh, the one to the far right, Viva la Tunisia Revolution. Uh, that is one of the, it's the very first poster because Tunisia is where it actually started. And I've been following it. And I knew once uh, 
they won their revolution, there's no way it was going to spread to the rest of uh, the Middle East. And uh, we see it continue today. And it's still in progress, the revolution in progress. It's not ending. It continues today. And many of those were called, picked up by magazines in Paris and uh, Germany and all these other places. And these are just more. The one in the center, uh, Revolution uh, Syria, uh, people actually reached out to me once they saw that I had done all these other ones, and I was tweeting them on Twitter, and the community on Twitter as well. And they told me the date of the revolution, when it was going to take place, and they wanted me to make a, a couple of posters. Uh, and so I told them I would make them, they could add their uh, Arabic text to it, and the one to the far, uh, over there with uh, Saad. It is one of those that they took and then added their Arabic text to it. Originally it was done in English. Mm -hmm. And that was uh, posted on the streets of Syria in the, um, in the earlier revolution, in the earlier days of the revolution. Not a revolution as it was subverted, but it's, it's now um, a civil war and something totally different. But um, that, that, that shows, you know, I live in Pennsylvania. Here my poster is A poster like that could probably get me killed. You know? <laughs> so I'm going to be blacklisted there. Um, and here's a magazine page from Germany, it's a design magazine, and they, they publish uh, two of those. And this one is from the UK, and they did a piece as well, uh, digitized. And a lot of these uh, posters, the, the inspiration came from Reagan music. 1970s, the roots music. That's what the roots artists used to sing about, you know, about South Africa, Zimbabwe, in ba in ba Marne, but um, as visual artists, I also uh, can also go beyond our borders, whether it's the United States or any other country, because reggae is a global voice, and visual artists can also have a global voice. 